Hello, it's me. Um, nice to see you again. I'm going to talk to you about the listening chair. I wanted to find out what song people felt was missing in the world. Not necessarily one that I should sing, just in general. I was trying to figure out if there was some common thread. The better I sleep at night. I took it to about six or seven different locations, mostly in the UK, but the first one was actually in Sydney, oddly enough, right on the other side of the planet. To great expense, because it's quite a hefty thing. The listening chair is five minutes long. Each minute of this song represents seven years of my life. The idea being that in the next seven years, I'll write another minute. Fitted quite nicely because I needed it to be roughly five minutes long because the premiere was going to be at the proms with Eric Whittaker, um, who'd offered me a spot at, the prom, at his proms uh, to write a song and to premiere it there with his choir, which is quite an honour. <laughs> I thought of this idea of finding a chair that people would sit in, physically sit in, and I would gather this information from all the people that sat in the chair through video recordings of them. Um, so there were some speakers in the chair, a little volume knob, um, and then a tablet in a little screen that you pulled across. With a group of students from the Middlesex University, we kind of created this um, tech chair. I didn't really know what people were going to say, um, but I've really enjoyed meeting hundreds of people. It was great actually, the first person that sat in it was a small girl. Now, what's your idea? What do you want a song about? Penguins. Penguins! It's a Humpty Dumpty. This is a Humpty Dumpty chair, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And what do penguins like doing, Ernie? Dancing and singing. Dancing and singing. You tell the camera, dancing and singing? Dancing and singing. Mm, she'd love a song. And um, she said that she wanted me to write a song about penguins. Some people didn't want to get in the chair, they felt a bit kind of, you know, self-conscious or something. Um, so they didn't want to get in the chair. But I had lots of good talks with people. But it became quite clear that there wasn't this one common thread. So what I did was I went then to Wales. Um, I went to Wales to write the song. And I took all of the video footage and I, I downloaded them all onto my, my laptop. And on the train on the way in, I was trying to think, what can this song be about if they're all so different? What I've garnered out of all of that was that there is common threads within different age groups. And then I started to see specifically to the people, um, kind of my age group, a real resonance with what they were saying. And one person in particular uh, said something that he thought wasn't very useful. The song that still needs to be written is the same as all the songs. It's the song that's important to you at the time and helps you remember something or feel something or express something and so that's not going to help you write a new song but um... and I was like hmm that's funny I've gone to all this great lengths of you know finding out what other people want and maybe there's something missing in here maybe it's you know I I've actually forgotten about me um, and maybe I should like look into me again now and what do I want to write a song about because I'm still one of those people in the chair I suppose piecing all this together I felt like I wanted to write a song that I could connect to all those people of myself and younger age and that the song would continue through my life and maybe more people would sit in the listening chair. So it would continue to be a project, continue to be a chair, uh, continue to connect me to people, you know, for you know, every seven years I'd kind of quite like to do this again. And so when I got to Wales, it was actually relatively, relatively easy and uh, found a lovely little hotel and that became my kind of little studio. So I was singing often like three or four in the morning, but there was nobody in that wing. So I wasn't, you know, stopping people from sleeping. I spent most of my time kind of just making strange noises and I found the first 28 years really easy to write about. But it was this kind of final period I found very difficult. And it turned out to be very dark and dissonant. I want to have children. I was kind of, yeah, not so, not so pleased with it. Um, and even when I went to, uh, you know, premiere at the proms, I still felt not very happy with it. And uh, recently just kind of managed to finish it and really love it now. I love the way it ends, it's great. Offline.
Most of the musical ideas, like for instance, the 21 to 28 period is in 5 4. Um, and that's because somebody sat in the chair, he was roughly 20 something, um, and he said, Oh, I think you should do it in 5 4. Um, and I was like, 5 4. But actually, it's great. It's got this really kind of like upbeat feeling, but it's kind of slightly awkward because I'm trying to kind of bluff my way through life. Is it the clouds the Somebody younger suggested something quite dissonant. Um, so that was a, a teenager, so I, I did this quite dissonant thing. At the end of the song, it, I finished the fifth minute, and then I say, who am I now? That's my question. So I'm looking, looking into myself, going, who am I now? Um, and that will be, you know, looking into the future. Who, who do I want to be? And then everybody around me in my life now um, will also ask that question and that will kind of echo me. I didn't know where the song would take me. I had no idea that a chair would take me to this point of real kind of self-focus or looking at my life, looking at where I am now, I had all kinds of questions, which is why actually the last minute um, was really difficult because I was still very much in that tangled place in my mind. And it was because I was, I was doing lots of projects and I still am doing lots of projects and I loved them all. Um, but what it has done in a way is I've been very detached to emotional things because I haven't been listening. I've been, um, I've been making and kind of, uh, you know, collaborating and doing all these things and going to China and going to Bhutan and, but actually what's been missing, um, is another part of me, which is this, um, you know, listening in um, rather than listening out. And so the listening chair was a way for me to listen out, um, but also f for me to listen in. But it was also very cathartic uh, to just go, well, you know, it was really embarrassing at the time and I thought I'd never live it down, but actually you can see the funny side of it now. And maybe people won't like to hear about my bra being thrown around the German classroom. Um, I'm sorry about that. I needed to do it. I needed to put it in my lyric. Because it was one of the most awful things that happened to me when I was a teenager. So you may notice that I'm moving a little erratically in the video. And that's because we actually shot it at half speed, all in one take. And then it was sped up afterwards. So here we are in the runaround of the roundhouse. So this is the, the kind of corridor that goes around the external wall, uh, underground. This is hers the damp wall, and this is the dry wall. Um, but today, and for the last three days, it has been um, populated by my life. Uh, things that I should have thrown away, but kept, thankfully. Um, so over here, we begin with piano. Uh, we couldn't get the grand piano in here. In fact, we couldn't get any other piano down here, so we used that one instead, which has the action taken up, but that's okay, because we're not playing it. So in here, this is my 0 to 7 period. So these are my little hands that I, I play a little game with. And there's tons of stuff here with each a story in itself. This is Super Spaghetti Extra Long Legs, um, who didn't really play. <laughs> play <laughs> Hello, Mr. Super Spaghetti Extra Long Legs. How are you? Fine, fine, thank you. <laughs> I loved Michael Jackson. I referenced moonwalking, uh, which I, could, of course, could do very well and as little, but I won't demonstrate now. Um, this is a turkey that I painted when I was very little, um, which my mum is convinced is a turkey, but I was just a splurge, really. But she, I'll let her believe that. Um, so over here, this is my Fisher-Price tape recorder. Um, I can't actually remember if this was my actual one um, or whether we bought it later, but it serves a purpose of beginning, of beginning the, um, the video. Um, and it's actually got some probably awful demo of me singing something, but maybe not that long ago. It's not really working. Oh. <laughs> so for some reason, uh, the Fisher Price decided that um, about 10 seconds in it would go which sounded like it was going to kill everyone. Um, and we tried to kind of style it out for a bit, but eventually it got a little bit silly, so we had to start again. Um, this is a little snake. This was the first um, trick that my brother ever played on me, of April Fool's. I was in the garden, and um, 
We all thought it was a real snake, but of course it wasn't. It was just the wooden snake. Um, little toy piano that actually wasn't bought for me as younger. This was bought for me as an adult, but I thought it fitted quite nicely. Something here, which sadly I can no longer fit into. It's very pretty though, isn't it? Um, and then, yeah, this is this is not something I, as I drew this recently with my right hand, so that it would look a bit more like I was actually drawn it. Uh, that's actually from me as a little girl. That was the seesaw that we had, and that is the football and something else that's red. Um, and here's the telephone. Very realistic, as you can tell. Um, I like to colour in things. Anyway, 7 to 14, I was into my Dali posters. Um, I was very much thinking I was going to be an astronaut uh, or a musician um, because I loved gazing out into the stars and wanted to fly. I, I loved my swimming. Um, see, look. 50 metres all the way to 800 and then a thousand. Isn't that amazing? I did a thousand metres. I think I'm only just about to do that now. Um, what else? Yeah, some things that we liked to eat when we were younger. Finger of fudge is just enough. Da, da, something, something. Um, little cat here. Once upon a time, fitted me, doesn't it? No. Um, a little clarinet and my cello. This is when I started to play other instruments other than the piano. Um, and I, I started to get a little bit older, listen to things like Starship. Um, that's not the song I'm listening to. Ah. Nothing's gonna stop us now. As if this world runs out of something, something. I knew all the lyrics. This is what I thought was really good. This is my GCSE art. Very good. This is one of my first lyrics. I'm lost in a world of confusion. Could this be a nightmare or some kind of illusion? Which is, I think, how everybody felt on this shoot. Could this be a nightmare or some kind of illusion? Please, Lord, save us from this craziness. Aliens! <laughs> We, were, we spent about two days just dressing this place and practicing. Um, it was something I was rather proud of that one. Little camel, somebody drinking out of the Nile or whatever. Um, so Should we also explain what everyone else in front of you is doing? Okay, so we've got Alex, who's. Oh, I don't mean that, I mean just like we're all walking backwards. Oh, right, okay, yeah. That. Um, so, yeah, on the uh, about half an hour ago, when we, we finished and we wrapped it up and we decided all together this was the shoot that we liked. Um, Alex is on the on the camera and he's as he is now, kind of walking slowly backwards with no shoes on, um, because he likes to feel nature. No, because he wants to feel that you know the carpet and this and that, so he knows where he's going. So he's he's doing that. So the mic's behind him, um, doing the lights and kind of making me look not so dog tired, which I actually am. Um, and then Rush is behind him, shouting out, um, you know, left, right. You're going to walk into the the lamp you're gonna step into some glass um to alex um and we all did tons of work getting all of this stuff down here which seemed like a good idea at the time until we had to bring it all down and now we have the horrible task of putting it all back again anyway so here we have little bits of my life coming into play when i was becoming uh, i was a teenager now and it's my first boyfriend well proper boyfriend, not the other one, the other one cheated on me, doesn't count. Uh, this is John. Uh, so you remembered his phone number, but I've slightly changed it because I didn't want anyone phoning him, not that he lives there anymore, but his parents might still live there. Um, so I'm kind of becoming, you know, a little older now. I used to love these. In fact, I'm quite looking forward to eating this now that we've finished the sheet. Um, I did like a bit of drink here and there. I went to boarding school and there was nothing else to do. Um, drinking and smoking. Um, and yeah, reading, a little bit of reading. Here we go, look, first video ever made, 1997, Getting Scared. Oh, 1997, okay, so it would have been 20. But anyway, uh, let's forget that happened. And then this is um, me in my grandma's hat. Actually, I forgot to put that out. Um, in the back of the cab for iMegaphone. That's the first record I make. And I was making it during this period. Some of the songs I wrote when I was 15, 16, 17. Um, here's my, my helmet that saved me many times from um, a smashed head. And uh, here we have my suitcase. On we go into the big wide world. So now we're in 21 to 28, so this is my frou-frou period. This is me um, buying lots of little bits of kind of things and stuff to decorate my, my first flat, um, which was a yeah, fantastic thing to have. 
uh, had my independence, had my first record deal. This is a, a print that somebody bought me of a Banksy print, um, Banksy, Banksy stencil that's on London Bridge, was on London Bridge, when I was making Speak For Yourself. And I wrote this song called Daylight Robbery, and in the lyric of Daylight Robbery, um, uh, passing by, by the girl with the balloon, um, which is her. And so that's me on my cycle home back from my studio in... Bermondsey in London, South London. This is my beautiful Neumann TLM 103. Um, and these are various bits of things that I've used. And this I used uh, now come down, right at the end of this period when I was performing at Letterman. And now we're going into the Roundhouse era. So when I was 30, I moved back to the Roundhouse. And um, I'm still here. And now we are in the Round, run around of the Roundhouse. Um, this is what I wore at Coachella. Um, which was a big moment for me. And uh, this is something I wore in a photo shoot, which I really loved. Um, and this is something I was wearing on tour. Um, and here we are, so this is my period where I start to get a bit, you know, my body's not quite what it used to be, it doesn't hang in like the same places. And uh, this is what this, this, you know, bits of this, this moment in this song is about. It's not quite, not quite being as springy as I once was. Right, gramophone is coming up right behind you, Michael. And now yourself, Alex, to the left, 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 left. And so this is also where all my family stuff is. So now I'm, I'm kind of here, like, looking after the house a bit. And these are all the family photos all around and bits from my, bits that I bought in. And then my studio, which is kind of my space in the house, my, my real space, which this is a kind of, yeah, little, little version of. And all the bits of gear and stuff that I've accumulated and um, little examples. This is my latest favourite thing, which is called the OP1, which Alex also really likes, um, which when it warms up, I'll get it to set. There we go. Get it to make some little noises. Oh. Yeah. Um, and here, this is what we just did a couple of weeks ago, is we actually blended the listening chair bra. So the, the one over there is not actually the real one. This is the real one. And we blended it. And um, we're going to put this into the deluxe album. So it's all here. And this is how we monitored it, um, coming through these little speakers so we could hear the um, we could hear the music coming through here when there's one uh, at the start um, on the little, another little speaker. And then I'm here right at the end. Right of it all why am I doing all the stuff that I'm doing and going crazy and I need help um, and then I end here and I ask myself um, where who am I now who am I now and I ask to the camera who am I now and then all the people that are in my life right now they echo me with the words who am I now and so the idea is that in seven years time when I've written the next minute of the song um, that we'll start back over there and we'll begin the next five stages um, for me when I'm however many, 25 years on from now. Um, and then here, speaking into the camera, so this is going to be our transition. This is how we're going to transition fluidly from the last minute that we just filmed today, uh, seven years from now, where we'll use this footage and then we'll transform that into the, the next section of the song. And that's what we're going to do. Very exciting. Got a bit of dust on your lens. Cat, blue, piano. It really has been a crazy journey and I, I never thought it would be so challenging, so difficult. I'll, I'll always look fondly to the song um, as, a, as a song that helped me move on in my life. And perhaps, at the very least, I can hope that um, maybe it will also help other people to look at their moment in their time. Ask that question, who am I now? And uh, what do I want out of life? Castles, play ping pong, talk to animals, I kind of thought there might be some common thread that I'd write about. I had no idea it would turn into the song that would travel with me for the rest of my life and never be finished. So it's a kind of a picture book or a scrapbook, I suppose, of my life. It finishes when I die. Um, but unfortunately I won't be around to, ex to experience that finished feeling, um, but such is the irony.